Hello everyone, uh, this is Professor Tianyi Wu from National Yangmin Jiao Tong University. Uh, welcome to my class. The name of this course is uh, Reliability and the Value Physics of the Semiconductor Device from Silicon to the Modern Mode Technologies. And first of all, this is online. This lecture will be divided by the five parts. So the first one, I will give you an overview of reliability uh, in electronics, some basic definition related to reliability and what will be the possible fundamental mechanism that can drive the degradation in the semiconductor device. And second, I will start to talk about the mathematic tools that can give us uh, some a useful approach to analyze reliability and the values. And the third one and the fourth one, I will bring the two uh, most important reliability issues in the silicon-based semiconductor device, which are time-dependent dilution breakdown, and the fourth one will be the interface charges and the bias temperature instability. And last one, I will also talk about the reliability challenges in the modern mode uh, device, which are focused on the GAN, gallium nitride silicon carbide wideband gate technology. As an example, I will be introduced in this uh, lecture. So first, let's start from the basic overview of reliability in electronic device. So before we move on to further analyze the reliability and the degradation in the semiconductor device. First, we have to need to understand what is the reliability. And let's look at the, the dictionary. You can find out that the basic definition of reliability come from the dictionary is reliability as a probability of operating a product for a given time period under specific conditions without value. So from the definition, we can clearly understand that there could be the three important factors in the end to influence the reliability. The first one is the probability. So that means that if we do the reliability testing in our semiconductor device, it doesn't mean that all of the device will suffer the reliability or degradation issue, but probably some of them will have the the, the this reliability issue. Therefore, we need to start to apply some uh, statistical distribution function or some mathematical tool that can allow us to analyze the probabilities issues when we deal with uh, reliability in semiconductor device. And secondly, the another very important term in the reliability is related to the time here. So that means the degradation happens in the reliability is a time dependent issue. It's not a static one that you measure only once you will find out. In the beginning, you measure several times, you didn't find out any degradation. But if you operate the device for a certain while, for example, one hour, one month, or even one year, you will start to see the characteristic shifts. So in general, reliability overall is a time-dependent phenomenon. And the last one is specific condition. So that means it is not that uh, every condition will always induce a reliability issue. It could be some of the uh, bias condition can accelerate degradation, but the, below some of the condition, actually the device can show the perfect performance without any time dependent shift here. So therefore, one of the goal for doing the reliability is we also need to define the operation condition that allow a customer can safely use our semiconductor device without any failures. So in the later slide, we'll also start to talk a bit more about probability, time dependent, and what does mean the specific conditions here. So first, again, what does mean the probability? I think in general, uh, we all learn the basic probability from the high school or in the college. Uh, but in the case of the engineering part, that when we try to apply the probability to analyze the reliability, Therefore, we have to review again the basic definition of the probability. 
So probability is the means as a sampling of a product for testing. And the statistical analysis of value test results and use a distribution function to describe population that fail. So that means we have to apply the certain, we have to understand the basic statistics uh, analysis, and we need to apply the distribution functions to uh, analyze uh, reliability. This is because when we try to produce a product for our customer, it could be the, the population for the product that we produce is a huge amount every day. But however, when we do the reliability testing, we are not possible to test all of them. So therefore, we have only test a selected sample. So that means a sampling of a product. But in the end, if we only test a small amount of the sample, we need to use the statistics and distribution function to project our result to all the product. And in this case, we can understand the, the overall uh, device behaviors in all our electronic device. So that's why the statistic concept and the distribution function are very important when we deal with the reliability issues. And the third part is a time dependency. So the time dependency of the reliability is implied by the definition, and therefore the time variables appears in all of the value distribution function. Uh, one of the main difference uh, between the, the, the knowledge we learn from the typical semiconductor physics device and the knowledge we have to learn in the reliability in the semiconductor device is the time factor here. In the typical, when we characterize our semiconductor device, we only measure twice, and then usually you will have the like typical current versus a voltage characteristic, but there's no time factor inside. But in reliability, we are actually more interested in the time-dependent current, time-dependent voltage characteristic. And in the end, in our value distribution function, we have to also consider the time factors inside. So here is a one example uh, related to the very uh, typical uh, uh, dielectric reliability issue in the silicon device and also in the more than more semiconductor technology. This is what we, uh, this, the issue here is called the time dependent dielectric breakdown. So as you can see from the schematic here, what we are actually trying to investigate it is a gate current versus a time. So that means if you just operate in the short time, so your current didn't change, that means your device is very stable. But as long as you operate to the enough time scale, you will start to see the current increase. When the current increase, it suggests the breakdown and also the degradation in your dielectric. In this case, this means a hard breakdown. So you can see from the material, from the TN analysis, we can find out that there's a hard breakdown occur. In the end, will lead to this huge current increase. The detail of physics we will explain later. In the later, we have a one part that will dedicate to explain the time dependent dilution breakdown. In anyhow. This is a time-related reliability. As you can see in the beginning, if we only operate here, there's no degradation. But as long as the time is longer enough, it's always start to see the certain instability issues here. Okay, so the next we have to understand is what are the specific conditions. So when we do the product testing and to qualify our semiconductor device, it's very important to specify the operation condition. So the operating condition is essential in the predicting reliability. For example, the elevating the temperature is uh, usually the universal way to accelerate values. Therefore, it will make a huge difference when we test a sample, test a device in the temperature uh, between 25 Celsius degree or 125 Celsius degree because that can give us a completely different value mechanism. So when we talk about reliability, we have to also specify that the 
what's actually your testing condition because if you only can uh, say that uh, our product is safe for 25 sales degree that's definitely not enough for the 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 real life uh, more practical application because in the typical case we will also test between the 25 and then the 125 sales degree even the higher temperature needs to be done for reliability testing uh, similarly so other testing condition can be for example the different voltage different humidity therefore when we talk about reliability we have to very clearly mention what are the specific conditions and next is we have to also understand what does values mean here because the value can be identified if we use a different criteria so when we talk about value does it mean the actual fracture or breakage of the component? So that means you completely like the, 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 de the device is completely destroyed, is completely uh, not functional anymore, or it's just a certain degree of the performance degradation. If so, then how much performance degradation then we can consider as a value? In most of the case, probably like 20% or like 0.25 millivolt, 0.5 millivolt ship can be often used as a criteria to identify that the device already reached to the values. And also can be something else, like for example, some uncertainty that is generally accepted that product failure occurs when the required function is not being performed. So that means we have to clearly define the, what is actually the required function for our semiconductor device. If the required function didn't perform, didn't reach our spec, and then we can also uh, identify this is a value status here. And one of the key way to measure reliability is uh, value rate. So this is a rate at which device or component can be expected to fail under non-use condition. So if we can estimate the failure rate and that can give us some idea that how long our semiconductor device can still be functional. 